A famous battle between Lockheed and Northrop Corporation began in the early 1990s when the U.S. Air Force launched a program to construct a next-generation advanced tactical fighter. Designed to fly unseen to enemy radars, the YF-23 is an unusual aircraft with a V-tail and diamond-shaped wings. The Lockheed F-22 Raptor was chosen for drive-off by the U.S. Air Force despite its unique design because of its agility, mobility, and capacity to strike at a steeper angle. Still, Lockheed had an edge because of Northrop's bad relationship with the Pentagon and past contract problems. The contest showed that a positive reputation may be just as significant as innovative design or better technical standards. To compete with Soviet aircraft such as the Sukhoi Su-27 and MiG-29, the U.S. Air Force launched the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program in 1981 with the goal of creating a next-generation air dominance fighter. Following the detection of the sophisticated Soviet prototype fighters by U.S. spy satellites, negotiations with U.S. airspace firms started to integrate cutting-edge technology like a stealth, super cruise, and quick takeoff and landing. By 1984, the program had established the specifications for a new fighter, which included an 800-mile mission radius, supercruising speed, and a maximum takeoff weight of 50,000 pounds. The Air Force asked Grumman, Rockwell, Boeing, General Dynamics, Lockheed, Northrop, and McDonnell Douglas to submit concepts a year later. These companies then formed two rival teams and submitted their plans in 1986. For the YF-23A design, Northrop and McDonnell Douglas were selected as finalist partners, and then Lockheed, Boeing, and General Dynamics. To construct and test prototypes, they had 15 months. The Air Force planned to purchase Boeing 750 fighters, while the U.S. Navy intended to replace the F-14 Tomcat with a variant of the victorious aircraft. With a range of around 2,800 miles, the Northrop YF-23 was created to meet the demands of the U.S. Air Force for stealth, survivability, and ease of maintenance. The Grey Ghost and the Black Widow II were its two prototypes. On August 27, 1990, the Black Widow, which was painted charcoal gray and with red markings from Black Widow spiders, made its first flight. The Grey Ghost had a V-tail and diamond-shaped wings, and it was powered by General Electric engines. The aircraft was designed to be as stealthy as possible, using turbofan engines and a radar-dodging profile to thwart infrared missile detection. The YF-23 could accommodate only one pilot in its nose-mounted cockpit. The goal of the Grey Ghost design was to retain low visibility while traveling at supersonic speed without the need for an afterburner. Its boundary layer control system, which was made up of panels with tiny holes punched in them to draw in boundary layer air before it entered the air intake, was meant to do this. Because they were frequently separated from the fuselage, conventional air intakes were less stealthy. With two swinging doors covering a cavernous, coffin-like space between the cockpit and air intakes, the weapon bay's layout was distinctive. Along with two AIM-9 strapped to the bay doors, the aircraft was also capable of carrying three staggered AIM-120s. The prototypes did not have the lunch system installed, though, and if one missile jammed, the others would be inoperable. John Chu Peck, the plane's designer, expressed the Northrop ATF team's confidence in their aircraft, saying they were certain it was superior to the other one. In addition to the Grey Ghost, Lockheed was working on the YF-22 Raptor. The Grey Ghost achieved a maximum angle of attack of 25 degrees and a top speed of Mach 2.1 during the 11-month flying testing conducted on both aircraft. The test flight lasted 65.2 hours overall and did not include any missile firings despite possessing a weapon compartment. Raptors have flown for 91.6 hours, firing AIM-120 AMROM and AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles in a single test. Declared the program victor in 1991, the Air Force unveiled the Raptor. With the ability to maneuver at the same high angle of attack and carry eight air-to-air -air missiles, the YF-22 and YF-23 were regarded as superior fighters. But altogether, it was thought that the YF-23 performed better and Northrop's streamlined design was preferable. Credibility, not technical supremacy, was the main factor in the Raptor's win versus the Grey Ghost.
When it came to selling the aircraft and taking advantage of its rivals' deficiencies, Lockheed excelled. Cost overruns and fabricated testing on a nuclear weapons guidance system damaged Northrop's credibility. Lockheed was able to persuade the Air Force that they could handle the fighter program more effectively after hearings before congressional committees and Pentagon audits permanently tarnished Northrop's reputation. The defense security budget fell after the Cold War and Lockheed was given the contract. Air Force members reaffirmed their faith in Lockheed's capacity to deliver the aircraft at the projected cost. According to aerospace researcher Paul Nisbet, the Pentagon was unwilling to go against the grain and waste political capital. Lockheed also used a busy flying test program to showcase the capabilities of its fighter, the Raptor. Pilots from Air Combat Command were amazed by the Raptor's ability to attack at 60 degrees and execute fast 9-degree spins. But Northrop failed by not showcasing their skills, which played a big part in the choice. Northrop had already produced the F-18EF and B-2, but the U.S. picked Lockheed to continue dominating the fighter industry. After winning the competition, the YF-22 evolved into the F-22 Raptor, which saw service entry in 2005. The Air Force lowered the number of F-22s it had originally intended to purchase after the collapse of the Berlin Wall and the cessation of Soviet threats. Similar in performance, but with greater stealth, greater range, and supersonic speed, the YF-23 would have been a more formidable foe against emerging threats such as the Chinese J-20 and the Russian Pak-FA. Until 1996, the Great Ghost was kept in storage. It was then transferred to the Western Museum flying in Torrance, California, and the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force. Built to resemble the F-14 Tomcat in size, it was intended to carry Hughes AIM-54 Phoenix air-to-air -air missiles. The Navy changed the F-14 to use it until 2015, at which point the program was abandoned. A long-range bomber and next-generation bomber program took precedence over Northrop Grumman's 2004 proposal for the U.S. Air Force, which planned to use YF-23-based bombers. Within the military aviation community, the Great Ghost has achieved legendary status, with some rumors indicating that its design is kept in secret. Since then, Northrop Grumman and Lockheed have engaged in other competitive events. In 2015, Northrop emerged victorious in a new venture. The B-21 Raider, a stealth bomber that is scheduled to begin service in 2040. What do you think? Was YF-23 really a better option than the YF-22? Share your thoughts in the comments. For more such videos, subscribe to this channel. Thank you.